Every heroic journey has sacrifices. Every person has moments in their life where they have to make tough decisions. It's intense. It's emotional. Hard fights and bitter losses and stuff. Something about making the decisions, right or wrong, good or bad. So, how do you want to do this? to D&D Beyond, and I am very excited because I have literally never built a Blood Hunter. The homebrew subclass made by Matt Mercer and shared on D&D Beyond uh, as a subscription homebrew, as a sort of special category. But uh, to help guide me through that process, I snagged someone who has, in fact, rolled up a few of these folks. So please welcome back Tanya to pass, aka Cypher of Tear. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Very nice to see you. Uh, and I am very glad that you could join me for this one because I am, I am excited about this. So for folks who might not have used this before, um, this has been available through D&D Beyond in a special arrangement. Um, to use it, you're going to want to turn on Critical Role content, the slider that you have in character creation. And today we are going to build one at about level three and sort of talk about uh, where we would go from there with that character. Um, but we're doing this in part because there have been some updates to the Blood Hunter class that went live on Valentine's Day on our site. So if you're a longtime player, look out for that. Primarily, the changes are some wording changes and the addition of a new option uh, for your Hemocraft modifier. So if that meant nothing to you, stay tuned because we're going to talk about it. But that, uh, as we do that, we are going to be referencing the character we made and a wonderful 101 article by David Atkins that is up on our site right now to help answer all your questions, starting with, Tanya, what's a blood hunter? Uh, blood hunter, I, I look at it as basically a fighter that uses the power of blood. So you've got a little magic going on. You've got some martial skills going on. But you're using the, the power of blood. And what I like is that at least the way that I've played one is not that the character's evil. Because so many people, and you'll laugh at this same because we're both Dragon Age nerds, um, think of blood magic as inherently evil and a bad thing. But you're just using your na body's natural fluid to do some things and get an advantage in combat. <laughs> I, I love that way of looking at it. And I should note, as I love is mentioned in the article, this class may or may not be the right fit for every person at every table because themes of self-harm can be involved, are involved in sort of the mechanics of this class. And that's just not going to be right for every player and every table. So it's a good idea to check with your DM, both because this is homebrew and because of the specific nature of the theming that throws, flows through it. Um, so that is just a warning for the rest of the stream and for the Blood Hunter in general. But I will say, I, I love the theming of this one because the idea, and please do a click through because it has a very funny multi-layered origin of how we got to the Blood Hunter as it exists today. Oh. Um, but that it's, it's based on a thing, based on a thing, inspired by a thing, based on another thing, as so many wonderful fantasy tropes are. But uh, the idea is you are, you're, you're sort of giving into this dark side a little bit, maybe potentially, in order to hunt bigger evils, which is right, that's a classic uh, mode for a character build. Um, and you have sort of sub branches, subclasses for it available based on which kind of thing you might be hunting after. So we're rolling up a blood hunter. Uh, obviously I'm a big believer that any combination can work, but is there a particular thing that you think would be fun for our build today? I think a blood hunter and we're going straight blood hunter. We're not multi-classing, correct? Uh, for this one, I think we're going to start uh, as my very first one. Uh, I, I will start with a taste okay. of it, although uh, I know you can speak to some of the other properties. Um, I would go with an increase in strength and int intelligence. Okay. Because at least with a blood hunter, because you basically have to bloodlet on yourself, you have to really consider when you're going to use those powers. Mm -hmm. And, you know, are you... Are you going to be able to use that, not be a liability both to yourself and to the rest of the crew? Because you could weaken yourself. There are, there's a lot of cost to using the power of blood. 
So mm. that's what I would go with. And languages, I guess it's since you're a human. I feel like we oh, run and- across... We we don't have to be a human. We could uh, like I I'm I'm noting down our ability score choices as we go here. But a uh, free choice. Um, do you want to stick with human or hmm. do you want to swap to something else? Let's be a Haragon. I th- because we have to get our Monty Python reference in. I love it. And Killer Bunny, Bunicula. There's there's just a tremendous amount of potentially rich thematic material to draw on for this. Uh, all right. What size should we be? Oh, let's be menacing. Let's be the biggest bunny we can be. I love it. Just so intimidating. Um, yes. Um, Look, so rabbits we have, can be frightening. As as Anya from Buffy uh, so wisely reminds us. Um, uh, our Herringon is, of course, going to be a blood hunter. Willing to suffer whatever it takes to achieve victory, these adept warriors have forged themselves into a potent force dedicated protecting the innocent mm-hmm. although it's your character so it's whatever you want uh and we're gonna build at level three which means we are nice and beefy ish because we have a d10 for our hit die so blood hunter has a pretty strong base which is good because as you alluded to earlier we are gonna need those hit points to power some of our abilities mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um so i'm gonna pop over to abilities right off um, we auto rolled up a fighter, so it has already assigned us some things. Um, but okay. we get to choose our Heron Gone bonuses, and you're thinking strength and intelligence? Yes. Absolutely. So I think the strength is going to help us uh with our primary uh uh combat stats. So you you want to lead either with strength or dex, I think, according to the wonderful mm. 101 article I've been referencing for this. Um and your next two things would be either the ability that's going to power your hemocraft, in this case intelligence. Um you now have the option mm. to do wisdom if your DM agrees, um, or constitution to beat yourself up. Um but I think we're gonna need mm. that int bonus. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And in fact, do you want to swap something around um from our standard yeah. fighter build here? Let's take a couple off. No, well, you might need con. I feel like we could lose one from con and one from strength and beef up charisma. Because who an eight? Um, let's see. So we're to, unless we uh, use our ability score increase for charisma. Okay. Um. Let's. Um, oh, you know what? I also. I goofed up my choices here. All right. I had planned to do strength and int, which would put us here. 17, 13, Mm -hmm. 14, 11, 12, and 8. And we are thinking that we will take one back out of strength and put it in charisma? Yes, strength or... Let me scroll back up. We could drop our decks, I think. Hmm? Yeah, we're not Not going to need too much decks. It's not ideal, but... See, because strength is a 15, I would say maybe one off strength, so both strength and con are 14. Um, so I think we are going hmm? 14, nine. Um, we want that that nice high con. Um, and then we have dex, intelligence, and wisdom. We need our int for our abilities, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. It's gonna go. See how my math is. We only have seven points left. Uh, okay, oh, no. um, and then that we can get an eleven and a twelve for Wiz and Dex. What do you think? Uh, twelve wisdom, eleven Dex. Awesome. All right, so we have a nice uh, sixteen starting strength for our uh, Blood Hunter. Um, a, a nice intelligence check to power our abilities and some constitution to make sure we stay beefy. Um, I feel good about that. Yeah. A um, couple of proficiencies for our Blood Hunter. We get to choose yes. from acrobatics, arcana, athletics, history, insight, investigation, religion, and survival. I think arcana, religion, and survival. Because you would have to investigate arcana to know these skills with the blood. Religion, again, in case there's any rituals you would need to do. And survival, because you need to know how to not bleed yourself dry to do this. 
I love that. And all of those feed the idea of someone specifically hunting arcane forces, which we're going to get with the blood hunter. Mm -hmm. yep. So uh, we now have at first level, we've survived the hunter's bane, a dangerous long guarded ritual that alters your life's blood, forever binding you to the darkness and honing your senses against it. We're going to have advantage on survival checks to track fee fanes or undead or int checks to recall information about such creatures. Um, and at this point, we are sticking with intelligence as our modifier, right? Yep. Excellent. Mm -hmm. um, and we are going to get to choose at first level our first blood curse, but I'd like to skip forward because at okay. third level, we choose our blood hunter order. Now that's our subclass for blood hunter. And I'd love to know uh, what between ghost slayer, lichen, mutant, and profane soul. Which of these do you think we should uh, use for our first blood hunter? Uh, Fen, my Black Dice Society character, picked Order of the Lichen. So I have a fondness for that. And I think a wear bunny that is a blood hunter would be so terrifying, depending on how you play them. <laughs> I love it! Uh, okay, I love this choice. So the Order of Ly the Lichen comes with the burden of lycanthropy. Um... Oh, and I can answer this question coming in from chat right now. Uh, who Dennis Shop is asking, is the Blood Hunter subclass considered rules as written? Can you use it in Adventurers League? It is not Adventurers League legal. They are not officially part of Dungeons and Dragons, as you'll note in the warning on the, the page here. Um, they are and can be very fun, uh, but but you would want to just talk to your DM because this is not official D D content. Um, we just enjoy having it here on the site um for convenience. All right, so we're going to get some heightened senses. Advantage on perception checks that rely on hearing or smell, uh, as many folks will recognize sort of lycanthropically. And we're going to get hybrid transformation. As a bonus action, we can transform into a special hybrid. This would be Herringon slash wolf form. <laughs> uh, a Herringon, but with like fang, like, like really long fangs, like Banicula. And really long claws. I love it so yeah. much. And maybe the the fur just gets a little taller and wilder. Just not doesn't really oh my, change that much. Yes. <laughs> oh my goodness. I, now this is just me being silly, Amy. But what yeah, if yeah, every yeah. time you use your form, your your fur like goes into like this like really high pointy mohawk and your fur gets just spiky? I love it, and that's perfect. Uh, and I, that's officially in the, in the, in the build now, um, <laughs> I love while it. we're transformed, we're going to have advantage on strength checks and strength saving throws, uh, and a plus one bonus to melee damage rolls. That sounds very nice. We've got a ton of resistance, um, to various kinds of damage from non-magical attacks, not made with silvered weapons. Um, we have a special way to use the crimson ripe feature we're going to get, uh, with our blood hunter. And we've also got some bloodlust. So that's a lot going on. Uh, yep. <laughs> let's see. So we are going Order of the Lycan. Um, and if you are opting into the spellcasting version, this sort of semi-warlock one, you're going to want to choose your bonus down here. But we are going Order of the Lycan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, for those that aren't caught up on Black Dice or just haven't seen it, um, my character starts strictly Blood Hunter. But then I decided to to multi with Warlock. And so Dreadform using Eldritch Blast and then switching to my Beast Form is ridiculous. That's amazing. And let's take a quick look because you were kind enough to share with me the character sheet for Fen. What do you enjoy uh, most about rolling Fen out uh, as a multi-class? with this particular um, beautiful thematic combo. Well, especially because we we hid that I had warlock abilities for several episodes because it's B Dave. You know he plays the long game. And um getting to do that and then immediately going into dread form and just watching the chat kind of go wait a minute. But I like it because I get vampiric type things like I get vampire bite, but I don't have to be a vampire. Um, and it's just fun to roll her out. Um, 
And I, uh, it's not on my character sheet yet, but I do, I do have another weapon, but I don't get to use it yet. Ooh. Um, and you can see there's a long list of things you can do with your combination. Here's your form of dread and your eldritch inv invocations, um, which are, are layering on top of uh, the incredible abilities you're getting from your Curse of the Lycan um, or your Order of the Lycan. So <laughs> I clearly a force to be reckoned with and a very cool and thematic build. Um, and also, sorry for spoilers for uh, Black Dice Society. Catch up on Black Dice Society on Thursdays. Um, uh, You'll see tonight. Uh, <laughs> so we have chosen our our. That's our plan. We're gonna we're gonna be a wear bunny. I love it. It's gonna be so much fun. Um, but we have more Blood Hunter abilities. Where that came from? Um, we get to pick already our first Blood Curse. Now, blood mm. curses are a unique thing. Uh, what's your? Do you have any favorite blood curses to use? Ooh, let me see. Because I feel like I a I don't remember my exact blood curse because it's been a while since I made them. Um, but let me pull up hers. Mm -hmm. I will navigate us to the. There is a list uh, available yes. of the blood curses. I've got Blood Curse of the Fallen Puppet for Fen, but I really like Blood Curse of Exposure, not the exposure that doesn't pay your bills, <laughs> but um, Blood Curse of Exposure is when a creature you see within 30 feet of you takes damage from an attack or spell, you can use your reaction to temporarily weaken its resilience until the end of the target's next turn, loses resistance to all the damage types dealt by the triggering attack or spell, including for that triggering effect. So I really like so, Blood Curse of Exposure. That's a fantastic, and something that this class does very well is to uh, work as a team and support other styles of play, even while being dangerous in and of itself, um, because sort of setting someone up for big, big damage, either from you or one of your, your teammates, um, is is a very, you know, can be an easy to overlook way to be very effective in battle, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and you said you since also... I've got order, oh, sorry, Amy. Yeah, no, no, no. You were also mentioning the Blood Curse of the Fallen Puppet, which is one you have. When a creature you can see within yeah. 30 feet of you drops to zero hit points, you can use your reaction to instill that creature with a final act of aggression. Ooh, the creature immediately makes one weapon attack against a target of your choice within its range. That's got a ton of thematic juice and is very creepy and extremely cool. <laughs> I can't wait to get higher level to get Blood Curse of the Howl. So if you make it to 18th level uh, and you have Order of the Lycan, Blood Curse of the Howl, as an action, you unleash a blood curdling howl. Each creature within 30 feet of you that can hear you must succeed on a wisdom saving throw or become frightened of you until the end of your next turn. Uh, and it, if it fails by five or more, it is stunned. Uh, and if you amplify, you can do that up to 60 feet and you can choose any number of creatures to be a uh, you can choose any number to be unaffected, so you will not terrify your friends unless you want to. Uh, that sounds very fun. <laughs> so what should we pick for our wear bunny? Exposure? Sure. Let's go with exposure. And this wear bunny knows your weaknesses. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. We also get uh, Crimson Rite, a key feature. You learn to invoke a Rite of Hemocraft that infuses your weapon strikes with elemental energy. So this is something it costs you to activate uh, using your blood magic, your Hemocraft here. Uh, but you get to add basically special magical elemental damage uh, of a type that you like. What are we thinking for, for our little binocula? Um, Either flame or storm. I like storm. I don't know why, but I like lightning damage for our wear rabbit. Hmm? Yep. 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 Um, and let's see. That will take us. Hmm? We've uh because I I quick rolled this up already, it shows soldier for us, but uh it, there are okay. a few we can stick with that or we can go. My favorite thing is to visit the quick build. They recommend soldier or urchin. 
if you're building up your first blood hunter. So stick with soldier. Stick with soldier. <laughs> the Herengon armies that trained us perhaps expelled yes. us once we acquired the lycanthropy. Um, that could be uh, oh God, yes. what set us on our path. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. I think I, I think this character has to be an NPC and something I run. Oh, please do that and let us know uh, the adventures. Um, we, of course, uh... we, need, we need a name. <laughs> Sorry. My brain is just like trying to figure out a way to insert this action in a charity game I'm doing next week. Um, yes. Um, I like Temporaria. <laughs> But what about something totally innocuous? Fluffy. Yes, absolutely. Uh, I'm already very attached to that idea. Um, and, you know, which of these Herengon look like they hide the most sinister secrets? <laughs> uh, the one on the left, the brown bunny. Yes. Um, well, if he's got some, 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 some killer eyes, I think, uh, in, in this. And you, uh, had, you had a pick for language for us, I believe. Oh, let's see. For a Haragon. Ooh, I was going to say either Elvish or Orcish. Yeah. It feels like you run across elves and orcs pretty frequently in D&D. &D. Yeah. We're going to. Or Undercommon. Go... <laughs> let's go under common we've we've won some places you know there was the army phase of our life and then the getting like mm. trophy phase of our life and then some time in the underdark and now we have resolved on uh uh hunting out the evils that helped uh change our life in that way um we have our starting equipment from uh rolling up a fighter so we could take it all off and add starting equipment for blood hunter which would look a little different um but that brings us to fluffy the heron gone blood hunter um gonna just let's see we can we can do a little decoration on here hmm? oh that's right <laughs> Um, oh, there's a I blood feel, hunter backdrop. I, I, we, we have our uh nice moody, um, blood hunter backdrop on at the moment, but we can switch it up if we like. Hmm. I like um, it. I really like yeah, it. Yeah, I do. I, I having not made one, I'm uh still attached there, but uh we could pick. Let's see. Hmm. How about the for our our just a, a quick look at these? I'm gonna say. Ooh, the electric mm, vortex. Since we picked storm, I love that idea. Um, I. I think you. So... Oh, perfection! There. It is. Uh, there we go. Um, and I think we have to stick with the DDB red because we are a blood hunter. So some nice yes. blood red is going to be perfect there. Um, and Fluffy is all set to go out there and do some terrifying, terrifying damage. Uh, thank you so much. This. this has been so much fun. <laughs> okay, I love this. I need this character so I can copy them and make them an NPC. Absolutely. And that link is going through chat or if you're watching this on YouTube, it's in the description right now. Now, just as a quick look ahead, what's something that we would look forward to about some of the higher level uh, uh, abilities that we're going to unlock as a blood hunter or or a, a order of the lichen blood hunter specifically? If there's any one thing that you're like, ooh, will you get that? Let me go back to that because I am the worst. Um, Because I need the link that you have and I don't have it. I'm smart. Um, We're going to get our extra attack at fifth, which is nice for the that fighter yes. base that's under, you know, you want to be good. I think I love the idea of grim psychometry. Uh, psychometry? Ooh. I don't know how to say that. Which is psychometry at sounds level. right. Yeah. At ninth level, we're going to be able to sleuth out dark secrets uh, with a special advantage, a supernatural talent. 
for discerning the secrets surrounding mysterious relics or places touched by evil. When we make an intelligence history check to recall information about the sinister or tragic history of an object you're touching or your current location, we'll have advantage on that check. And at the DM's discretion, a suitably high roll might cause your character to experience brief visions of the past connected to the object or location. Um, I think dark augmentation at 10th level. So starting at 10th oh. level, the magic of Hemocraft suffuses your body to permanently reinforce your resilience. Your speed increases by five feet, and you have a bonus to strength, dex, and constitution saving throws equal to your Hemocraft modifier, a minimum of one. That's honestly, I, I always go for flavor, but you know what? You really need some extra boosting uh, on these things, especially when you are drawing from your own life essence to power these dangerous abilities. Uh, so those are some things to look forward to as you get your own uh, wear bunny up to speed uh, and take <laughs> her through those levels. And this has been so much fun. Tanya, where can people follow you to watch more of Fen, to get more of this wisdom and maybe check out this charity game? Uh, so I'm safe for TR everywhere online. Tonight at 4 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Central, we'll be over at twitch.tv slash dnd for uh, Black Dice Society. We're in episode five of season two. And um, Sundays, you can find me over on the Rivals of Waterdeep channel for Rivals of Waterdeep. We're in our 12th season. Um, Latia Jaquise is in the DM's chair. I know she just visited with you recently. And um, the charity game I'm running will be on Logitech G's channel for Black History Month. That is next Wednesday, 4 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Central. I'm basically speed running them through the Infernal Goose Chase that I wrote because we only have two hours. <laughs> so uh, it's going to be DJ Knight, who plays Desmond on Black Dice Society, Imperial, and uh, Frisk, who is an amazing creator. And we're they're basically just going to start, you died, you're in hell, good luck. Hopefully you can kill this <laughs> goose. Uh, and they'll be raising money for a black girl's smile. That's wonderful. Uh, that's going to be a great table and sounds like a very good time. Um, and thank you. Please keep checking out our uh, pre-orders if you haven't caught them yet for Critical World Call of the Nether Deep and Warden Kane presents Monsters of the Multiverse. You have a few more days if you're watching this live on Twitch to catch our bundle sale, which is running right now uh, through this weekend, um, the 20th, uh, to get uh, discounts on all of our various bundles at D&D Beyond. And we appreciate you watching and rolling with us, and we'll see you next time on D&D Beyond. It's the end.